coming to optimization for this path tracing, I chose the RTX 3080 as it's still a rather common GPU out there and it's still really powerful. At the same settings as the PlayStation 5, for example, we can see it achieving nearly two times the performance of the PS5, which is awesome to see, and I think Ampere GPUs are really doing well in this game and outpacing older generations. But watch what happens when I max the path tracing options with DLSS reconstruction at that same resolution and otherwise same settings. Yep, the performance goes way down. You would essentially be looking at a 30 FPS experience in this game at these settings if you wanted to max it out. Arguably you could, but I want to offer an alternative for 60 FPS with RT. So let's go through the settings. First, you have the quality settings for the indirect path tracing, which control the amount of specular bounces visible and diffuse bounces. We'll start with reflections. Here we can see, ranged from low to high, how there are less reflections in the reflections the lower you go. At the high quality level, we get all three bounces. At low and medium, there appears to just be one bounce of specular lighting, and you can see a more matte tone in the reflection of that phone booth. The difference between medium and low for specular quality is the reflection resolution. It appears to be half resolution or so at low and at full resolution at medium, and we can see that affecting the quality of smaller details in the reflection, like the text and symbols. Visually, I would say low is actually a good optimized setting here. For diffuse lighting quality, we see something similar. I would say here, even at the low setting with its limited bounces of light, we can still see a good amount of light bounce occurring. The blue light is bouncing off the bowl onto the table and windowsill. At the higher settings like medium and high, we can see more resolution and bounces there which increase the contrast and indirect shadows and light in the bowl. But honestly, I still think it looks pretty good at low here, and I would say if the performance is good enough, which we'll talk about very soon, then it's a great optimized setting. For the transparency tracing, there's a quality switch here from low to high, which you can see reduces the tracing resolution of transparency. In motion, it means the low setting is just more unstable in comparison to the high setting, but I would say the low setting here is a good candidate for optimized settings. For direct lighting, you only have an on and off switch, but there is control of its denoising. And here, I wanna show you something interesting. Here are the three denoisers for direct lighting. They all look kind of different, and it's hard to say actually which one is most accurate as we don't have a ground truth example here to say what is most accurate. So it's a matter of taste, but the most important thing to notice is that the performance is way different between them. The denoising set to high will half the frame rate in comparison to ray reconstruction or the denoising set to low. Here, for such things as shadows, I prefer the look of ray reconstruction, and given its performance, it makes a lot of sense to use it on an NVIDIA card or low if you're not on an NVIDIA card. For the 3080 though, this test that I'm showing is very important, as it shows us that even at PS5 settings and only using RT direct lighting with the low denoiser, we're just about 60 FPS or so. So if you're we going to add in any of the indirect lighting, we would definitely be way below 60 FPS. So for something like the RTX 3080, I actually only recommend doing RT direct lighting and using ray reconstruction if you're going for a 60 FPS experience. Recommended settings get more interesting though when I drop in an RTX 4070 here, and here we can see at those PS5 settings that I showed off earlier, it underperforms next to the RTX 3080. It runs on average 14% slower than it at the same setting. But if you compare it with the full path tracing suite enabled and with ray reconstruction at those settings and res, well we can see the tables flip. 4070 is now outperforming the 3080 by 26% at 41 FPS while the 3080 is just a bit above 30 here. My recommendation for 4070 tier GPUs is to turn on indirect path tracing options and transparency to low to save some more performance and then turn on frame generation. When doing that, the game is now at 80 FPS as we're seeing here, and this is one of the heaviest areas in the game. It is a great deal faster as we're seeing here in the non-forest areas running at and above 100 FPS, for example. So it's a pretty great experience, but I would still say it's actually not perfect depending upon your input device. Now it's a bit hard to show off in this video, but the game controls really well on a controller as I'm showing here. But with a mouse, if you're not at a frame rate divisible by 30, the game can have stuttering with camera motion using a mouse, just like it did in Deathloop. 
Now, I don't like this at all, and I think this is something that Remedy really needs to fix, and as soon as possible. Getting over to Ray Reconstruction, I have the same appreciation of it as I saw in Cyberpunk 2077, more or less. Reflections in motion are much better than the standard denoising that is provided. They really make the game look a lot better here, where we can see the old denoiser smearing in comparison to the really crisp look that we see there with Ray Reconstruction. The same with rapid lighting changes, which look snappy and natural with ray reconstruction on, but look a lot less responsive and a bit weird with ray reconstruction off. In Cyberpunk, you might recall that I said that it looked artificially sharpened at points in time, and I'd say that is lessened to a degree in Alan Wake, but it's kind of hard to say exactly why that is the case. But I still see that over sharpening occurring, and a great place to point it out is in character faces, where the sharpening aspect kind of over highlights normal maps on people's faces and makes their skin look a bit odd. It kind of destroys the subsurface scattering. In a scene like this one with Alex Casey's character, I actually think Ray Reconstruction is not a detriment to the realism of the material on his face. I think it looks pretty great here. But in other scenes like we can see here, I want you to notice how the Ray Reconstruction effect is killing the subsurface scattering on Alan Wake's skin here, making it look papery and kind of wrong as it's overemphasizing the normal maps. This sharpening is something that I think really needs to be worked on for future iterations of ray reconstruction as I find it a noticeable blemish on otherwise good results. Another thing I want to see improved is the over sharpening that can occur the lower the internal resolution is. At lower DLSS presets like we're seeing here, the game can have a more obvious posterized look than it has at higher DLSS presets. Like I said earlier, I think this game doesn't look as over sharpened as Cyberpunk does, but I still can see some of the hallmark issues that I saw in Cyberpunk, including a number of times seeing trails behind objects with ray reconstruction on, and I really want to see this tech improve for the future. Sure. but it is otherwise really great in this title and all the shots you've seen in this video have been with ray reconstruction on